So, um, I've uh, been a, a Stephen King fan for years, you know. Um, I first read a Stephen King novel when I was uh, 14. Um, I thought it was, I, I thought I'd been, it was younger than that, but I was having to think about it, and I, it was Salem's Lot, and I remember um, listening to the House Martins, London Mill, Hull 4, at that time as well, so it had to have been 86, so I was 14. Um, you know, I was I was already very into reading at that point, but I just that that kind of kicked the whole thing up to a new level for me. Uh, it was so um, you know, riveting and stuff, you know, and uh, it was great. It was great, like you know, and uh, over the next you know five or six years, I just would have devoured any Stephen King book I could get me hand on. I used to love going up to the library on a Saturday and seeing what I could find, you know, and. Uh, from the, the great, you know, the classic, you know, like um, Salem's Lot and The Shining and Pet Cemetery and um, The Stand and um, to, the, to the very good, you know, like The Dead Zone, which is a really, really good Stephen King book that not a lot of people seem to have read, um, you know, and, um, or, you know, Tinner, uh, uh, and uh, which is really well written as Richard Bachman um, and uh, Misery you know great stuff to the to the to the pretty decent you know Firestarter Christine and Kujo and I know he was very prolific beyond that but I, I think his absolute best days were possibly slightly behind oh, no, that's been, I'm being a bit harsh there no, um, he, wrote, he wrote some great stuff then uh, later on into the 90s um, uh, Insomnia is really good Hearts in Atlantis is a cracking book um, I really love Needful Things you know uh, but with, with, with the quality control was a bit patchier you know Dolores Claiborne and the Tommy Knockers anyhow uh, and, oh and, and also uh, another thing that I, I loved about Stephen King was his short stories he always managed to produce in, in any in any collection of short stories he wrote he always produced a really good handful of absolutely phenomenal short stories in every every you know um, uh, collection that he released um, you know in Night Shift and um, uh, the Skeleton Crew you know Nightmares and Dreamscapes uh, everything's eventual I mean there's three or four of his absolute best stories in that collection of short stories um uh, everything's eventual itself is brilliant um, the death of uh, Jack Hamilton uh, brilliant short story and a, and a real cracker of a of a horror story the man in the black suit which I think he actually won an award for and uh, it, it's 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 I haven't read a horror story as good as, as good as it since since I actually read Everything's Eventual, which must have been about 20 years ago now. So yeah, big fan, and uh, oh my god, the sun's completely obliterating everything here, but anyway, can't be helped. So, um, you know, I, 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 I have a real place in my heart for Stephen King, like, he really kicked my reading up uh, a notch, you know, and um, I, I'm very, always have held him in, in a lot of regard. I really like them. Um, the, uh, his kind of biography that he wrote about writing and uh, can we knock you off there a bit yeah I really really like that and uh, I really liked what he had to say about writing and reading and the biographical bits and pieces of it were, were really good too you know so why am I going on about this um, well uh, as I've said I am um, uh, be on Twitter or do we as we say in Ireland on uh, Twitter a bit now and uh, <laughs> um, I, I, it's very disappointing to see the way Stephen King goes on on Twitter um, look at the man is a is a, a boomer you know liberal a, you know democrat whatever you want to call him as he's perfectly entitled to be but um I just would have thought a lad that like had applied his imagination to inhabiting the different 
uh, kind of thought worlds of these characters, the good ones and the bad ones and the indifferent ones and the people with different points of view might have made him a little bit more rounded in his views, you know. But but it clearly it hasn't. I mean, you know, and it's just anyone kind of right wing is just bad, you know, and uh, that's just all there is to it. Um, a bit disappointing, really, you know, it has to be said. But specifically there, it just, um, you know, going on about books being banned in schools in America, you know, and uh, he, he had tweeted about that before and had gone on about how the likes of To Kill a Mocking, Mockingbird and, you know, things, books books that are accepted as classics these days had, had at one time been banned, you know, um, you know, Stephen, uh, he, like, he knows perfectly well the, the books that are being currently banned in grade schools in America. He knows perfectly well. He knows how completely unsuitable for the age group that they're being pitched at. Yet he, he'll still go on and hog that tired uh, talking point about how, oh, these mainstream books are, were once considered, you know, were banned, you know. Like it's somehow landing some sort of a an ideological blow there, you know, that'll just shatter your worldview, you know. It's silly boomer nonsense is what it is. And um it's 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 just that's disappointing, you know. Um another and and uh, you know, obviously given his worldview, obviously he by almost by necessity has to have a very secular worldview, even though he's he's kinda of, been wishy-washy, you know, in describing his kind of, if he has any kind of Christian belief or, or, or any kind of, anything, anything like that. And he's not, obviously not breaking any law, I don't want that, but, um, but I liked, when I was thinking about it, what I liked about his earlier stuff certainly was, um, it was always a pitched battle between the good guys and the bad guys, usually some sort of a supernatural baddie, you know, like the Overlook Hotel, which is explicitly a horror book, even though it's a study and meditation on his own alcoholism, uh, it's, the hotel is indisputably, not, not allegorically, not metaphorically haunted, it's literally haunted, and it possesses Jack Torrance, and the, the, the win in that book is that, spoiler alert, uh, Jack, uh, comes to his senses enough just as he's chasing Danny through the hotel to murder him to just tell him to run for it like you know and uh, so it's a kind of a partial win for the good guys and that that's kind of the way a lot of this stuff was or or that the the evil spirit you know would triumph and um so that that was like you know you, you could get very invested in that and he seemed to have a if there was a metaphysic going on in his books, I mean, it, it was it was a pretty straight straight up, you know, slugfest between good and evil, you know, which I like a lot, you know. Everything doesn't have to be deconstructed to its, you know, moral relativism sort of, uh, you know, could we not understand that those vampires just needed some living room in, in, in rural Maine, you know, what's your problem, bigot? But that's where we're at now, you know. Um, the 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 good guy, the good guys are liberal, you know, Democrat, progressive types, and bad people are horrible, you know, belief professing, uh, bigoted, hateful, whatever, blah blah blahs, you know, in the Stephen King world. So yeah, it doesn't detract one iota from how much I ever enjoyed his books. And I actually during the, the COVID, during the coof, I actually reread Salem's Lot and really, really enjoyed it. In particularly the first half of the book, you know, all the chapters about um, the lot and uh, all the different characters and their what their life like was in the town, you know. But the, the, it was the descriptions of the town itself. Like there's a really eerie, really haunted quality to it. You know, the the feeling of it's autumn drawing to an end and winter coming in in, in rural man. It's ah, it's excellent, excellent book. So good. So yeah, you know, um, 
I suppose you just have to separate the art from the artist, as I've discovered quite a lot of <laughs> over the last 10 years, you know. Anyway, come on, Steve, will you, will you try and be a little bit more rounded in your views, mate, please? Thanks for listening.